hey good day this is katie samuel and welcome to my youtube channel today i want to talk about the various snail housings um there are so many of them but i want to touch on four and it's actually by popular demand a lot of people are asking me why i don't talk about the other type of snail housing and it looks like i'm attacking the people who are doing greenhouse but really it's, it's it has nothing to do with attack um like I always say, I'm, I'm not into the business of building um, any snail housing for anybody. In fact, the people who have called me know it. When you call me and you even ask me for, for a mason to build your house, and I, I tell you I don't have any, any mason. You know, so I'm not really into uh, benefiting from um, sharing the truth. So today, I'll be going into details to talk about the pros, the cons, and if possible, maybe how much you, you will need to set it up. And, I'm, and when I say that, I mean in Ghana because this is where I am. I want you to sit tight and watch this whole video because it's it's going to be a lot of information and you don't want to miss this. You really don't want to miss this. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel to get more information. I will soon be putting out information for, for free training. It will be for um, students, uh, people that are unemployed, um, people who cannot, or even the disabled, right? and then people who cannot afford the training it will be a training that's going to last for about five hours because i'm looking to take up about five um sorry 30 people in the training and it's going to be an online session please when i put out that information if you do not fall into the category category of um, students unemployed or somebody who can not genuinely pay for training please do not sign up because then you'll be taking food directly out of the mouth of people who um, um, need to be fed you know so um, please do not apply when you know you do not fall into these categories i want to give a shout out to all the people who have reached out to me and all the sweet messages it's it's very very um inspiring when i wake up to some of these uh, messages and it's crazy the places that i get these calls from it's very very inspiring um, I get calls from all around the world. It's very inspiring that um, the message goes all the way out there. I, I really do appreciate. So um, before I even start mentioning the, the snail houses that I want to touch on, I would want you to understand something, right? So a couple of months or, or years ago, I got some seeds from South Africa and parts of Zimbabwe. I've even gotten some seeds from the US before, right? And I've, I tried to farm some of these seeds or grow some of these seeds in Ghana and it did terribly bad. You know why? Because the seed was, was made for a different ecology or a different environment and I tried to put it in a wrong environment. Now, I want to relate that to, to snow farming. Look, I have seen certain farms in the US, I have seen certain farms in Europe, and I can tell you for a fact that if those farms or that farming model was brought to Ghana, it would not survive. It would not survive. So we need to understand that snails, there are so many different types of snails, and they require a certain environment or ecology for them to survive. There are certain snails that will survive certain conditions and there are certain snails that would not survive certain conditions. For instance, the Akatina fulica is able to withstand a lot of um, um, uh, bad moments. And that's why in your home here in Africa, when it rains and we see the AFs all around us, you step on them, you do not give them food all year round. Um, they do not have a lot of water um, access and all of that. They do not get calcium. Um, supplements and all of that every time it rains in your home you see the akatina fulica so i'm just saying this so you understand that there are different type of snails and things that they can withstand and so if you're going to be doing your snail housing you don't necessarily have to copy what is being done in the u.s or what is being done in europe if you're going to be farming even the um, the species in europe or in the u.s you need to put certain certain conditions or certain things in place because then things like predators even counts with regards to which housing and which snail you should use in which environment 
Uh, I must I must um, confirm that I have seen so many snow houses on the internet. So many. Some make me sad because now it looks like people are just coming up with their own ideas so that um, like they leave a legacy, you know? And I have I have a couple of videos that I have to even upload, but I uh, sometimes the time to even sit down and upload these videos is another issue. So I've seen and like my brothers in Nigeria, I say I, I well I applaud them for their initiatives, but then we also need to be careful. We you don't need to be carried away. And some people would ask me uh, that, do you know about inventions, uh, technology is growing and then we have to bring up new inventions. Yes, I do agree. But do you also know that whilst things were being invented, things like cars, mobile phone and all of that were invented, people asked questions. People wanted to know which one best fits the society, which one is safe to be used. So things that do not really fit, they were discarded. So it is not every every invention that people bring that you need to embrace. Sometimes you need to use your common sense, think around it. And then for some people, I don't really blame them because if you've not really done snow farming before, if some of these things are, are said to you, it's easy for you to believe. But um, for people who have done snow farming for a while, when certain things are, are, are pushed on you or they are, they are said to you, you're able to think around it and know that look this is this is just a lie or or this will not work so my in my nigerian brothers and sisters i see them um bring up so many models and i've seen some people even farming snails on um, on a shelf it's something that looks like a cabinet so like you see the nets and then they have just little sand uh, with the snails on top and then you see them through the nets and um, for me, with my experience in snow farming, that model is not going to help. Um, I've seen people farm snails in car tire. Well, that, that is domestic, you know, something you are doing at home. But even that as well, if you look at the way snails multiply, you realize that that's, that situation is also not going to be help, helpful for the snails. Anyway, but today I'm going to be talking about four um, main types, uh, the four main types that are dominating in our sub-region or in, or in this part of, of Africa. So the first one is a hatchbox. The second one is the free range or paddock system. The third one um, is the almighty greenhouse. And then some people say it's no greenhouse and that it is net house because the real greenhouse is a different concept in, in Europe. Anyway, and then we have the trench or gallery system. So these are the four types that I'll be discussing with you today. So the first one I want to talk about is the free range or paddock system. Now, this system is, uh, I'll, I'll try to put a, 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 a picture in this video. Now, this, this housing system, so they usually lay like um, one course block around a plot of land um, it could be 45 feet by 45 feet it could be um, 20 feet by by 70 feet i've seen a couple of them now this system i see oh i watched one video where a nigerian brother was was asking that um, that is the best thing to do in, in ghana and in nigeria and i beg to differ and these are my reasons so like I'm saying, the design. So after that first one course block, they put um, wire mesh around it to about the waist level or let's say even the chest level. Then they, they barricade it and they grow all sort of things inside there. Things like uh, banana, um, cocoa yam, yam, um, all sort of things. I mean, and in that place, it's going to be looking like a mini forest, just like the greenhouse people um, sort of uh, want the place to look like, right? And then the top in this particular um, housing system, the top is not covered. I must say that this system is beautiful. Um, it looks like you're creating a natural habitat for the snails. And I would also say that it is very cheap to do and very easy. Um, even even a teenager can build such a such a, um, a housing system now these are these are my issues with that housing system 
truth be told, amongst all the four housing systems that I mentioned, I think the free range or paddock system is the most dangerous snail, sorry, snail housing for both the snail, the farm owner, and even the farm manager. And this is the reason why I'm saying this. Now, in that free range or paddock system, the snail can easily be attacked one by ants. And I've heard so many people say that ants cannot kill snails. It, please, it's a fallacy. It's a huge lie. Please do your research online. If you do your research, I don't know. Some people think when we say ants, there's just one variety of ants. There are so many varieties of ants. So if you see a sugar ant in your greenhouse, you shouldn't really be worried because the, the sugar ant does not even bite or sting. Now, there are very dangerous ants and ants that can even kill human beings so please let us let us understand what we're talking about ants can kill the snails so one ants will easily go in there and kill the snails now for most free range systems you realize that you cannot check in real time the progress of the snails because if you step in there you will you will step on 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 an egg or on an or on a snail I must say that I have seen free ranges in the US. The free ranges in the US are so beautiful. They they plant cabbage, lettuce, and all sort of things in there. And then they turn on the sprinklers to irrigate the place is beautiful. But again, if you check the reason why these snails are able to survive in that system in the US, it's because they do not have natural predators, right? Now, if you do that in this, in this tropical part of, of, of the earth, you would also be encountering centipedes. Now centipedes will be coming in to kill the snails. Centipedes will be coming in to kill the snails. And I currently have people in my contact list who have already had that experience. I'm not just saying it's because I hate somebody or I want to destroy somebody's business, but centipedes have destroyed somebody's free range before. And it's happening. It happens. Even if you do the other housing system, you see centipedes all around um, your farm. They might not have access into the farm, but you see them around. So if, when they have access to the snails, they will kill them. The third thing is lizards. So you could be living in a place where there are no lizards, then that's hallelujah. But if you live in a place where there are lizards, lizards will come in and they will try to swallow the eggs of the snail and then the hatchlings of the snail. So it is not very right um, for you to do the free range or paddock system and this is the truth um, also snakes will be interested in coming into such um, a farm because for them they don't even mind swallowing the the adult snails so snails sorry snakes are also a threat in such snail housing um, another thing is crow so the bird crow they also come there, pick up the snail. Sometimes they go to a high altitude, leave the snail to come and crash on the floor and then they eat the, 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 the meat. Sometimes so they pick up the snail from the free range and then they go to their habitat and then they use their beak to kill the snail. So imagine doing a, a farm. Of course, it's a business. And then all these threats are posed to your snails. Now these, these things are not being told to you because um, I don't know if they like to hide the truth or they do not know. I also realize that some of these people, they are not really snow farmers. They are snow house and builders. So sometimes when you even ask them the basic information in snow farming, they cannot even give it to you because they are not into snow farming. They are into snow house and building. That is their main occupation. So now the most dangerous part of the free range system is the fact that they are exposed to rats now if you do your research you know that rats are one of the common carriers of langworm and that is why when you take a giant african snail to europe and america the reason why the moment they see you with these snails in your bag they quickly quarantine the whole area they wear their gloves and then they come at you like they are ninjas is because they know that rats come and feed on things that snails are likely to to feed on and then the rats leave their feces behind and hence they end up affecting the snails as well so in these 
continent or countries they feel the that the snails could be carrying these sicknesses and that's why they quarantine you now this is the reason why um most of the time when i go to people's farms and i don't trust the 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 place i wear my gloves because look so far as you are putting feed in there and trust me the free range system the snails the feed you have there will not will not um it will not satisfy the snails it will not satisfy them so in most cases they find the need to leave orange purple uh, watermelon and all sort of things now even that too when you drop it there you cannot pick it up because um if you step in there you'll kill snails or step on eggs so the issue is that when the rats come there to have a bite of the pawpaw and sometimes they do not even come to have a bite of the pawpaw they try to come and live there because the place is cool for them and conducive for them or it makes them feel like it's a safe place where they do not have predators coming after them now when when the rats live with the snails over there just like goats you know when they are eating they poop at the same time so rats when they are eating or when they are in that habitat they also take a shit over there and with their carriers of langworm the snail eats the feces of the rat that has langworm in it and the snail is affected now you as a snail farmer or a snail farm manager if you pick up the snail the slime alone coming into contact with your skin exposes you to langworm it penetrates through your skin and then you have langworm in, langworms in your system so it is dangerous for a consumer and that's why some some books will even tell you that snails are not good for consumption um and it's dangerous to the farm owner and the the farm manager as well and the lungworms are not able to survive in the lungs of human beings so usually you find them in human brains and human eyes so free range actually for me in our sub region it is one of the most um, dangerous snow housings that you can have in our sub region that does not mean that every single free range um, housing system has these things that i've mentioned but you are exposed highly exposed to these things that i have mentioned and of course it is a business you are doing like i always say it is a business it is not some fun thing you're doing so if you're doing a business you need to know that all these things are threats and you need to mitigate them and i hope this makes sense to you the next one is a hatch box um that too i have seen <laughs> very interesting things come up now i must say that um, the hatch box currently the prices are around 750 ghana cities to 1200 ghana cities and i must tell you that i mean that's for the average size of let's say six feet to six six by five feet sorry six feet by three feet that's the average size and that's costing around 750 cities to 1200 ghana cities now um if you have 10 of those that's a uh, hundred uh, that's 12,000 ghana cities if if one is 1200 cities that's 12,000 ghana cities. and i can tell you for a fact that if you build 10 concrete pens roof and all of that you'll be paying about half of the of the amount that i just mentioned so for me um one the hatch box is very very expensive but this this is a, a picture of it i'll leave it in the video now it's a cool thing that you can do is an intensive uh, farming system that you can do in your backyard especially something that you want to do for consumption at home but really if you want to go commercial this is not something um, you have to go into and i must be honest with you that some of these boxes people have realized that the carpenter cannot make it in such a way that there are no um, space um around so when these pieces are around in the in the hatch box the hatchlings or the young snails are able to expose through um sorry escape through those holes and so you have people farming for like six months and then um they say they have never seen hatchlings but really they have hatchlings in a farm but the hatchlings escape through those holes the next thing is that because when water and um, soil come into contact with wood it creates rotten um so it is not something you can count on if you want to go commercial because after about two or three months you realize that the wood is getting rotten 
and then so for most um wooden hatch boxes you see that they have done so many alterations to it and i don't see why anybody will go and buy a hatch box for a thousand two hundred or 750 cds and then every three months every two months you need to keep uh, um doing maintenance work you know so also people have realized the situations with it and then now they are lining the box with with the black polythene i must tell you that one is not healthy for the snails because it generates a lot of heat um the second thing is that anybody who has dealt with this black polythene or plastic bags you realize that after a period it breaks down after a period when you grab if you when you grab the the, the polythene you realize that it breaks like like ashes it breaks like paper you know so after after some point in time it breaks down um of, after all the heat it breaks down and then you realize that there are little pieces that the snails consume and it's not um really healthy for them so for the hatch box these are the limitations to it this is how much you're likely to spend on them if you're in ghana um well it, there are certain hatch boxes that have survived over a period and because they are made with very hard wood woods like odum and sapele now you know if you're in ghana you know that these woods are very uncommon and they are very very expensive so if you're getting the cheap wood for a thousand two hundred you can imagine how much an odum or sapele will cost you to build um, a hatch box i mean but if you have the hatch box in these two type of woods that i mentioned um you're likely that your your snail um, hatch box would survive over even 20 years or 15 years because they are very very solid so that is the information with Hatchbox. Do with this information uh, as you please. Thank you. The third snail housing that I want to talk about is the um, trench or gallery system. So in this housing system, I think that is the most controlled system uh, or snail housing system that you can have in our sub region. It means that you can have a more controlled system if you live in let's say europe and some other parts of the world because of the natural predators that are available there and because of the environment or the weather that they have there let me make this clear so the trench or gallery system let me teach you how it's built it's very very simple so we do not really do a foundation like you know how um in uh, here in africa we have to dig very deep to create um, a huge foundation before we start building in this system the reason why i like it again is because um in future if you want to use the land for something else you can just break it down and then use the land for something else because there's no foundation so what we do is that we dig about five centimeters deep um and then we put the the mortar there and then we start building the course so usually it's between uh, three cores to four courses I've seen people doing two courses and please that is when you do that what well, you are trying to save the number of blocks that you'll be using but when you do that you're going to be developing waste problem because this system is very controlled you'll be spending a lot of time in this system because it is very very controlled you see a lot of things that are that could go wrong in less than 24 hours so if you do not build it well you will have challenges so after it's been built to about three courses um the secret again is that we cement the insides and that's something i don't see on the internet so people say that we are doing trench or gallery system but they, they, they don't cement the insides and the floor you need to cement the floor of the pen now the reason why we cement it is that you do not want ants to travel from let's say 10 meters away under the soil or under the ground and come and appear in your snail pen so we need to cement the floor there are times i have had in my in one of my farms where we cemented all right but the mason did not do proper um, cementing so there was a little hole and i can tell you that we had termites and ants coming from that hole so you can imagine if there was no cement on the on the floor what would have happened you know so eventually when we sealed it again and that was the end so you realize that so far as you put fruit and food over there ants will be very very interested and then they will come in there so we cement the floor and then the walls i've also seen people doing just one course block and then they dig the floor and then they put some uh, black soil then they put the snails there and do a trap door on top of it please that is not strange housing system 
that is not trench housing system because then you, you realize that you have not cemented the floor it is just one cause high and then um also there's no trench around it so you are exposing the snails to a lot of threats without even realizing in such a system a caterpillar or sorry a centipede or millipede will easily go in there and and then so you hear people saying oh um trench housing system is killing snails or, but that they are not doing the right thing when you are doing the trench housing system please check all the boxes that i'm listening make sure you do the right thing and that's the only time you can call it a trench or gallery system after cementing the insides to prevent um ants or other other predators from coming inside what you have to do is to do a trap door on top of it as you see in the pictures and videos so first is a um, a net a mosquito net that stops um things like fruit flies and all of that from coming in and then and even house flies and then we put a wire mesh on top now the wire mesh is supposed to prevent rats and other predators from coming in so if the rats has you know they have claws so when they try to use their claws to get in to come and have a, a taste of the pawpaw and then the watermelon you are putting in there the wire mesh is going to prevent them from getting access and then um, after doing the trap door on top of it there's a place where you lock so that human beings cannot have access anyway and then also you need to do a trench around it so if your place is a medium to small scale farm then you may want to do um the trench around each pen sorry each 10 pens for my place like this i have two farms there there's one that is a is a, is a medium scale farm and then there's one that is a large scale farm so the medium scale farm we did the trench around every 10 pens so and if your farm is very huge then you 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 do like a room full of pens and then you do one time um, trench around it and that's why we call it the trench housing system now the trench is like a gutter it's a gutter where you can put um you can mix water with um some oil so that ants and other um creeping insects will not be able to cross that space and come into the the housing system and so for me this system is is very very good it's it stops a lot of the predators from coming in now the reason why the reason why i say that this housing system is my preferred system is because it is very controlled with the um, trench or gallery system i'm able to identify any injury that happened in the last 24 hours um i can also easily do a snail population count and know whether my farm manager is stealing from me or not i can easily check how many eggs we have had in the last three months and i can tell you the hatching rate of that twenty thousand eggs that we had in the last three months i can also tell you that in the space of um of uh, a hatchling to about a year old how much mortality i've had is it within the right mortality rate or it is way up there i can also identify which snails are not eating i can identify as soon as possible when the snail started going on into estivation i can like about a month ago when i went to my farm i realized that some of the snails or a lot of them were going into estivation so i advised my farm manager we quickly started doing more irrigation we did not disturb the snails like what these people are saying on the on on the internet that shake the snail put it in water you know please it's not is unnecessary so all that we did was that we irrigated the farm more and then within a week when i went to Buno east and by the time i returned back to Accra and i visited the farm all the snails were up they were eating they were eating you see so if you are doing any other housing system you will not be able to identify these issues there are times too that the water in the trench will get dry some parts will get dry and then the let's say a centipede will be able to climb and find its way into the housing system now when you go in there in the morning to take out the feed whilst you move away some of the dry leaves and all of that you will you will see some of these threats and then you're able to take it out now when we are harvesting the eggs into a different place as well 
because of the manner in which we do it we remove the leaves to one side we move the snails to the to one side and then we tilt the soil we turn the soil gently to find the eggs whilst you're doing that if there are any um, um spiders or cockroaches that have found their way miraculously in there because of course when you treat the soil and the leaves you still will have about one percent escape for some of these pests so whilst you do these things you find them and you quickly mitigate that risk and then you you, you dispose it off and so for me this system is the best um, and anybody who has done snow farming knows that um, sometimes snow farming you can easily feel like giving up because sometimes you realize mortality happening you realize that they are not eating you realize that there's something going on and then it makes you worried especially when you are doing the trench or gallery system and this is what people are trying to not encounter so they want to do other things well in this housing system uh, you realize that when situations are happening like you see it in real time in 24 hours you see the problem and then you resolve it then you resolve it you see so it is not it is not simple to do i must be honest with you it is not simple recently in one of our groups um a woman said that her snails were dying and then we asked for pictures and videos of of the pen immediately she put the picture in there we realized that that particular pen there was um leftover feed that had rotten and all of that and was was developing fungus and bacteria that are also harmful to the snails in fact, when you go there, you can see you, or you can identify the pens that have been over irrigated or the soil is too dry. You can also identify that these pens or these particular pens, you realize that the soil was not really loamy. It was more of clay. And so we can quickly mitigate that risk. But in other snow housings, trust me, um, when there's an issue, there's even there's, it's even difficult to identify where the mortalities are coming from to, to, to mitigate it. Here in this trench or gallery system, you are able to investigate, even if there's a natural mortality. You can check the soil moisture, you can, you can check the soil if there's any predator in there, you can uh, check whatever they eat by looking at their feces and checking what they eat and then you can also even backtrack and check what they eat and see whether there's any food poisoning all of that you can check so for me this is the preferred snail house and i mean i can go on and on and on with it reason to why i love it uh, somebody will say that you're always saying cool things about the trench or gallery system you never say the other other part of it now i must tell you that it is very labor intensive so when you look at the greenhouse or the, um, the free range, you can have about five, sorry, you can have about five greenhouses and then one person will just be taking care of it. And that's why I say it is the lazy man's approach to, to snow farming. But when it comes to the, the trench or gallery system, you need, let's say if you have about 50 pens, you need two, pe two people to work on it because um, there are days that we take out, for instance, on my farm on weekends, Saturday and Sunday, those are the days where we do the, the egg, um, the egg harvesting and then creating the hatcheries and all of that and making sure we are doing like our periodic checks. So in that, in that moment, you realize that sometimes you can spend close to 30 minutes in one pen, in one pen, you know? So it is labor intensive. You need more workers in that system. However, I can tell you on authority that the yield that comes from the housing system is so good because you see all the issues in real time. So the money that you get from the trench or gallery system is more as compared to the other snow uh, housings that, that are available. And I'll be honest with you. Some persons have also raised concerns with regards to the cost of building the, the trench or gallery system. Well, if you use my system, I for one, I do not, I do not buy the, the, the bricks or the blocks. I mold them myself because I'm, I'm trying to cut down costs. So we mold the blocks ourselves. Uh, some people have trained, I realized that when they build their trench system, the corners of the, of the trench housing system, they do um, pillars. For me, that's unnecessary. Some people even use metal pillars. I do not find that necessary. I use wood, which is, which is relatively cheaper. 
so if you use my model to beat down or cut down your cost of course building 10 pens right now including roofing and um and doing the trap door on top of it the last time i made somebody do um an estimate it was ranging between 5,000 cities to 6,000 cities to build it 10 pens 10 pens now when we did even the the maths comparing um how many snails that can hold and then compare that to the greenhouse we realized that the trench or gallery system was cheaper in fact if we have a hundred thousand snails and we do the mass for both housing system you realize that it is very 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 cheap for the trench or gallery um, uh, system the only part where you need to put money is the labor because you need to employ more people and you are employing them because you want them to be able to take good care of the housing system and then be able to spike up your profit or your income that is why you need to employ maybe five six people but it is worth it that's what i can tell you now the final one is a greenhouse <laughs> oh goodness you know I'm, I'm laughing because charlie the attacks that come with regards to this housing system is, is not it's not easy anyway so i might not go into details too much <laughs> because i have two videos on this housing system already so you can watch it i just i just want to um add on on, on some of the things that I've, I've already mentioned so people who already follow me know that that housing system i'm not really in support of it because and i'm not saying this out of um, hate or ignorance i can tell you on authority that i have at least three or four people on standby on my phone even this morning even this morning i had a call from somebody who is doing greenhouse and they are distressed they are crying so um and usually when they call me i don't know how to help them because it is very difficult to identify the problem they are facing especially like a gentleman who reached me and he has about 2000 mortality in the greenhouse in a very short time um it's very difficult to identify what the problem is eventually he saw some interesting ants and then he thinks it is those ants that are um, killing the snows um th there could be other factors but you see because of the way the place is designed um even when i ask him to show me he has to walk on the soil which it means he's also um killing snails in that process so um sometimes i don't really know how to help them but i would just want to add up on some of the things that um are issues in the greenhouse so and i must say that it's a beautiful structure it is a beautiful structure i just want to say that it is not really designed for our part of the world and it is not designed for the snails that we rear here it is not really designed for those kind of snails now after my videos addressing their accusations with uh, uh, concrete and all that i see that now some of them are putting wood as platforms for you to walk on and now they are using plastic for the cement parts that i challenge them on so the polythene or bag again you know when the sun hits the walls of the greenhouse the polythene breaks down and the i don't know how to i don't know how to say but if you if you've had polythene exposed to to sun for a very long time you realize that at the point in time it breaks very easily it breaks and the snails will end up um uh, consuming those those pieces which is going to kill them now also i watched one video when the gentleman said that um they put the polythene beneath beneath so that the snails will not be able to climb on top to the uh, to the i mean to a high altitude it's a lie it's a lie the snails will easily climb that polythene and and go a very high altitude and then when they fall there's an injury and then they die um there are so many issues i can touch on with regards to the the greenhouse but please permit me um i will not really go into details with it like i said kindly watch my other videos on on the greenhouse and system and then i believe that it will inform you uh the other things we can discuss but we can do that another day 
in fact there are so many snow housing systems that come recently i saw soilless snow housing system soilless charlie please do your research before sometimes you listen to these things invention is good but please sometimes let's use our common sense and also let us do our own research let us read let us let us look at the things that affect snails let us look at the things that snails have to have to live on to survive you understand so you could be doing a different type of snail in let's say some part of korea and it's a different species of snail that will survive very well so far as you have limestone in that area it doesn't really need soil it does not need that you, it does not mean that you need to farm akatina marginata in a place that has no soil do you know the benefits snails get from soil my brother please stop misinforming people anyway thank you <laughs> anyway i've come to the end of um this session please sometimes to i need you to comment the real situation especially those who are doing the greenhouse and facing challenges please don't only message me please put the issues under my comment section so that people can know that i'm not lying and it's the truth please you see so anyway thank you for for learning something if you have any uh, questions or queries please email me um send me a text on whatsapp my two numbers are both on whatsapp if you call me and you're not able to reach me i'll i'll return your call uh, my only issue is that please if you can call me around the time where it's it's morning to afternoon in ghana i'll really appreciate it. sometimes i get calls and texts at midnight and sometimes it's it's a bit worrying but anytime you call me and reach out to me and i miss your call i'll return your call um thank you for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it and learned something thank you and god bless you bye